In the high cost of homelessness, the mayor John Cooper tells Fox 17 News one-on-one uh, -on -one that he wants to see change at Brookmead Park, the homeless encampment on the west side. Fox 17 News Amanda Chan is live in West Nashville with the mayor's plan as well as reaction from both residents and nonprofits who work with the homeless. Scott, if you take a look behind me, you'll see here some belongings that are set up just outside of the park, along with shopping carts and trash. The mayor telling us for the first time he'd like to get something done this year. We've shown you the trash, drug needles, and fires inside and beyond Brookmead Park's homeless encampment. The sense of frustration and just outrage over nothing being done uh, is it's constant. Our team's been consistently reaching out over email and in person to ask Mayor John Cooper about his plan. We were able to ask the mayor what he's doing to address the crisis inside Brookmead Park. That particular community I think has been about 20 years and so we're needing to clean up 20 years worth of need uh, and I'd like to get it done this year. I took that statement directly to taxpayers who live in the area. We have the resources now. Get it done now. It should have been done already. India Pungarcher with nonprofit Open Table Nashville believes one encampment should not be prioritized over another. If that includes getting all the residents permanent housing, you know, that is our end goal. While the mayor says the number of people at Brookmead has gone down, many community members tell us they only feel the problems gotten worse. That's a, a failure of society that we have that going on, and it can't be a failure of government that we're not willing to address the human need that exists in each one of those individuals. Pungarcher says she'd rather hear the mayor commit to more affordable housing units in Nashville. Busy parks and bustling sidewalks for Germantown residents. Perfect taxpayer perks on a sunny day, but District 19 Metro Council member Freddie O'Connell wonders how much longer it'll last. I'm happy to welcome guests into our city and our park system, but really, it is our taxpayers who have put these parks here for residents in Nashville. So ultimately, I'm concerned that we're losing affordable housing. O'Connell points to what used to be affordable housing, the Shiloh Apartments in Salem Town, but it was just granted multiple short-term rental permits. All of those units are going to be non-owner occupied short term rental units. Tell us, how does this impact a neighborhood? You know, if we see what we've seen in other areas where this has been an issue, then this place might fill up one weekend where 20 bachelorettes are here and they come home from the bars and I get complaints about noise and trash and everything else. Applying for similar permits now would be difficult given a policy implemented in September of 2020. We have some new regulations saying you can't be 100 feet from a park, but they got their master permit just before that policy was finalized. When Fox 17 News reached out to Metro Codes asking how many more permits they intend on issuing in 2022, I was told in part there is no maximum number of permits the agency can issue. We want neighbors in our neighborhoods and we want homes, not hotels. Yes, the Tennessee Department of Transportation told me it was the perfect storm of events. They said that we've gotten more rainfall than usual and more freezing temperatures and the roads in the area are at the end of their lifespan. Davidson County has had so many paving needs and projects, but Rebecca Hammonds with the Tennessee Department of Transportation says they can't meet the demand because asphalt plants won't open up during their off season. Is the state going to try to reach out to more contractors just because of this unusual season? So for particular projects here in Davidson County, we reached out to three or four, you know, because they're the ones that are closed and they're the ones that it makes the most sense to uh, get in contact with and ask, uh, but we always have to go through a bid process. And this time, Hammond says they only had two to choose from. She explains Jones Bros Incorporated couldn't do the work because they're so busy and they don't have the staff. And Charles DeWeese Construction said no because they don't regularly do that type of work, which puts DOT behind schedule with pothole repairs. It's taking time. We don't have endless amounts of manpower. We don't have, you know, an endless number of companies to use or choose from. So what this means is DOT has to patch the potholes with a cold asphalt mix, which is only a temporary solution. Hammond says when asphalt plants are not up and running during the colder months, they don't have hot asphalt available to patch them with, which she says lasts a lot longer. 
And TDOT told me in the next coming weeks, they will have at least five plants in operation to help repair these potholes.